One of the families that had a tremendous influence on my young life as a believer were the Powell family, uh, who lived at 817 North Avenue Northeast in Grand Rapids, Michigan. They had an old house that uh, the family had lived in for a hundred years. It had been at one time a working Dutch neighborhood, and the, of course the Dutchmen uh, worked hard and made money and moved out to the suburbs, but they had stayed right in the inner city. There were some pretty rough neighborhoods around, but they just saw it as a mission field. And this family, the father had come to America as a child, perhaps, or maybe he was born in America. I think that was the case. But his family had come from Holland. And uh, he and his wife, Anna, Peter J. and Anna, they had 10 children in this uh, big home. There were four brothers, Peter, Will, Claude, and Gerald, and they were all preachers. And then uh, there were six sisters. And the oldest of the sisters, Tina, had been born with very severe health conditions. She was so small that they made a bed for her in her father's slipper. And they had to watch over her 24-7. They didn't think she would live. In fact, the midwife had set the little body aside and was looking after the mother, thinking that the child was stillborn. And then they heard this little cry and they realized that she was alive. But they had to watch over her 24-7 because just even a little of her uh, saliva, she could choke and die. She was uh, very handicapped. She didn't really speak. She made noises that they sort of interpreted. But um, the authorities told Bill, and by the way, Bill was the oldest of the brothers who stayed in the family home. The three brothers got married, and Bill stayed with his six sisters, and they all stayed in the family home. And they really were eunuchs for Christ. They gave themselves to the service of God with the Gospel Folio Press and Rest Haven Homes, a home for the aged, and a Bible bookstore, and uh, Sunday schools, and uh, gospel work. They were involved in all sorts of ministries, and just a marvelous family to see their faith and their fealty, their their passion for the Lord and for his people, for caring for the lost. It was just a tremendous environment for me to be exposed to real Christianity, the heartbeat of Christianity. Well, as the family grew, of course, Tina was sort of their child. They all cared for Tina. Uh, she had to be carefully looked after, and the authority said it would be better just to put her in institution. But um, Bill said, no, we're not going to do that. They said, well, she'll never learn to read or write, and all you have to do is tell a Dutchman that he can't do something, and he'll prove you wrong. And so that's what happened. It took him six months to teach Tina to distinguish the letter A and then B and so on. And he taught her to write, taught her to read, and she loved to sit and to read. Well, Tina got saved at her sister Grace's baptism. Grace um, was baptized in the Grand River, I think, maybe, I'm not sure whether it's March, but anyway, they had to break the ice to baptize her. And, uh, and Tina, understanding perhaps the gospel for the first time, as it was preached there at the riverside, she put her trust in the Savior. and But she couldn't tell people. And she kept pointing to water, and she'd point to grace, and she'd point to her heart, and she'd point to heaven, point to the Bible. Grace needs water. What, what? And finally, Bill said, Tina, are you telling us that you trusted the Lord at Grace's baptism? You know, she was so excited, she couldn't sleep all night that she'd finally been able to testify to the salvation that she had in the Lord. Well, there was a glorious soul, Aunt Ethel Zinn, who had been through a personal human tragedy and had gone up to Alaska to work in an orphanage where her brother served the Lord. And then when she was, I think, about 85, she came to Grand Rapids, but she couldn't bear it being with all those old people at the old folks' home. And so she moved in with the Pells. They always had a huge table full of people for every meal, 12, 15 people or more. And uh, she would do all the dishes and she would do the proofreading. She was a school teacher and she didn't miss a thing. 
one of the things she, she did, her little ministry, was having a little Bible study with Tina. Well, they were going through a Bible course, and in this course, there was a true-false section, and the statement was made that all that was necessary for a person to be saved was the death of Christ. And she put, very slowly, she put the letter F, false. And so, and Ethel rubbed out the F and, and said, now, Tina, let's think about this. And, you know, she went back and read the little paragraph in the lesson that talked about the sufficiency of the sacrifice of Christ. And, and then she gave her another opportunity. And once again, she put in F for false. And so, and Ethel said, Tina, why, why are you putting F there? And so very painstakingly, her hand was kind of clawed. She, she slowly turned the pages of her Bible until she came to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 17, which says, If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, you are yet in your sins. Christ didn't just have to die, he had to rise again. And she had seen that truth. And uh, the Pells humorously contacted the author of that Bible study course and said, maybe you have to put in the front, written by your name, and then underneath, corrected by Tina Pell. But you see this. Here, here's a, a soul. She has had no formal education. She struggles to read. And yet she sees the light of God shining from the pages of Scripture. She gets it. How many people with great minds and great facility, the ability to reason, the ability to, to grapple with big ideas, but she knew more than many of them because she knew that Christ not only died for our sins, but he was raised again the third day, according to the scriptures, and was seen of witnesses and publicly proclaimed himself to be the resurrection and the life. Uh, what a wonderful thing it is to see the simplicity of childlike faith, taking God at his word and living in the good of it. May God help us not to get too clever for ourselves, not to get too sophisticated, to be in faith like children and just take God at his word.